How good is Nell actually? This is something I've been debating heavily over the years. In one of my earlier tier lists, I rated her among the best COs in the game, because I thought luck damage was overpowered. But lately, I've realized she's not as good as I first thought. But it's difficult to know exactly how good she is. Advanced by Web has a pretty solid tier list that is made through many years of competitive play, so it's a pretty good indicator of the CO's strengths. But even they just place Nell in tier 0, which is the broken tier. They don't do this because they think Nell can stand up against any of the other CO's in this tier, but simply because they don't want to bother with her. Luck damage is simply too unpredictable for the Global League. That's why Flak and Jugger are banned too, despite being in tier 4. But if Nell was to be placed in a tier, which tier would she actually belong in? That's what I'm hoping to answer in this video by looking at some numbers. So, let's begin. Before we start, I'm going to assume you're familiar with how the luck mechanic works in Advanced Wars. If not, I really recommend you watch this 10 minute video I made explaining it in detail. Because understanding how luck works in Advanced Wars is crucial to understanding Nell as a CO. If you can't be bothered to watch this video, I can do a very short summary. Luck is a random amount of damage generated on top of your rolls that does not discriminate. By default, every CO adds 0-9% to luck damage to all their attacks, but some COs like Nell get more. While luck deals the same amount of damage to all unit types, it is reduced by defense, and also by your own unit's HP. However, there is something about Nell's luck damage that I failed to include in the first video, and that is the difference between Advanced Wars 1 Nell and Advanced Wars 2 Nell. You see, in Advanced Wars 1, luck is not reduced by HP like it is in Advanced Wars 2, at least not unless you do 0% damage. There is a hidden mechanic in place in Advanced Wars 1 that sets your luck to 0 if your unit deals 0% base damage, as can be seen in this simulation where I have Lucky Star Nell Infantry at 1 HP going up against regular tanks. As you can see, despite having a luck rating of 60, they never inflict a single HP of damage to the tanks. However, if we repeat the simulation by replacing the infantry with 1 HP Max, who deals 6% base damage, we can see that Nell enjoys the full benefit of her Lucky Star. Some of these mechs are even capable of doing the full 6 HP of luck damage, despite being at 1 HP. This is quite different from how luck works in Advanced Wars 2, where a unit inflicting 0% base damage is still able to do full luck damage, but the damage is limited by the unit's HP. This means that Advanced Wars 1 Nell can do a lot of damage with low HP units, but only if the unit is capable of dealing at least 1% base damage. If the unit deals 0% damage, then no luck damage is inflicted at all. So Advanced Wars 1 Nell and Advanced Wars 2 Nell work quite differently to one another. I'm not entirely sure which one of them is the better one, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. For the purposes of this video, I will be analyzing Advanced Wars 2 Nell, as that is the rule set she uses on Advanced Wars by Web. In order to get a better understanding of how strong Nell is, and how she measures up against other COs, let's start by taking a look at her day-to-day -day abilities. That means how strong her troops are on average without any powers. Nell's units can do 0-19% to extra luck damage, compared to the 0-9% to that other COs are able to do. So that effectively means Nell has 10% more luck compared to other commanders. To see how Nell's day-to-day -day powers work out in practice, here is a simulation of normal anti-tanks going up against each other on 0-4 to four star terrain. You can see how the average damage done changes when the terrain increases. The reason I'm picking tanks for these simulations is because they do 55% damage against each other, which is the most standard damage values for most mirror matchups. With no terrain stars, these tanks will on average deal 5 HP of damage to each other. By comparison, here are Nell's tanks going up against anti-tanks. Her extra luck roughly equates to around 5% more damage dealt. If I were to explain Nell's day-to-day -day bonuses to a relatively new player, I would say that she has around a 50% chance to deal 1 HP of extra damage in battle. It's not a completely accurate way to summarize her power, but it's the simplest way to explain it. Because I was curious, I decided to compare Nell's tanks to Hawk to see how their damage values compared, and as you can see, they almost do the exact same numbers. For this reason, I think we can roughly conclude that Nell's day-to-day -day power is on par with Hawk's 10% firepower increase. You could argue it's a little bit better since luck damage doesn't discriminate and deals the same damage to all unit types, but Hawk's power is a lot more reliable. If he's fighting on a map on a Lost Wars by Web with a single comm tower, his units can two-hit KO enemy units on cities. Nell cannot do that 100% of the time, and that is huge for planning. Still, I think we can conclude that their day-to-day -day powers are roughly on par with each other. 
So since Hawk is a tier 1 CO and Nell has a comparable day to day, does that mean that she belongs in tier 1? Well, not necessarily, because Hawk is not in tier 1 due to his day to day powers, but rather because of his insane global damage. So next up, we need to take a look at Nell's power and superpower. Her normal power raises her luck to 60, while her superpower raises her luck to 100. This sounds very strong, but just how good is it actually compared to other damage boosting powers? Luck damage is hard to evaluate due to its random nature, but we can use the power of statistical averages to determine how much damage she is likely to deal in certain encounters, and then measure these numbers up against other CO powers of similar costs. I thought I'd start out by comparing her to Max. He's a tier 2 CO and his powers cost the same as hers. 3 stars for his normal power and 6 stars for his superpower. Of course, Nell and Max are quite different in that Nell's power affect all her units, including her indirects, but at the same time, she gains no bonus to her movement, so I kind of think the two balance each other out. The two powers are, of course, still very difficult to compare, but I think it's a good place to start to give us a baseline understanding of just how much extra damage Nell gets. Here we can see a comparison of average damage between Nell tanks with Lucky Star and Max tanks with Max Force. And we can see here that Lucky Star on average is a little bit stronger than Max Force in terms of pure damage. As defense rises higher, the numbers do start to equalize a lot more. However, Lucky Star has a much higher dispersion rate, making it less reliable, and that can make it a lot less appealing to players. With Max Force, you know pretty much beforehand how much damage you're going to do, and that makes it a lot easier to plan around. So I would say that the on average 5-10% extra damage dealt by Lucky Star isn't that impressive considering what you're giving up for it. However, in terms of pure utility, you could argue it is a lot better than Max Force since it affects every single unit in her army. However, it also doesn't give plus one movement like Max Force does, so eh, it kind of depends on what you're looking for for the situation. Next up, let's compare their superpowers, Lady Luck versus Max Blasts. It's pretty much the same deal here. Lady Luck does around 10% more damage compared to Max Blast on average, but her dispersion rate is a lot higher, and as you can see, defense does equalize the bonuses by quite a bit once it rises higher. However, there is no denying the insane damage potential of Lady Luck. It is a very scary superpower. So looking at these numbers, shortly summarized, Nell's day-to-day -day bonus is roughly on par with that of Hawk, giving her units approximately 10% extra firepower in battle. Her CO powers, on the other hand, are around 10% better than Max in terms of raw damage output when it comes to mirror engagements like tanks on tanks. Of course, just comparing their raw damage numbers doesn't tell the whole story. Nell's luck damage allows her to do many unique things that Max cannot, such as sending infantry in against enemy vehicles. However, while it is cool to watch her infantry obliterate neotanks, this is actually a very risky strategy. Infantry are valuable units, and repeatedly sacking them into enemy tanks will quickly lose you a lot of map control if you don't have healthy infantry to capture properties with. You should definitely risk it against expensive units like neotanks, because there's simply too much value to pick up here. And I would perhaps sometimes consider it against medium tanks, but I would be careful risking infantry against regular tanks and anti-air unless it was really important to get rid of them. Because as I said, losing too many infantry over the course of the game will seriously impede you long term. To show you just how much damage you're likely to do with powers, here's a simulation of Nell's infantry going up against Andy's neotanks with Lucky Star active. On average, your infantry will deal around 3 HP of damage to the neotank if it is out in the open, and if your infantry is on full health. I would definitely not advise going up against full health neotanks with Lucky Star up, as you're simply too likely to lose your own infantry, but I would perhaps do it if the neotanks are on 5 HP or less. Next up, let's see how they do against Neotanks with Nell's superpower, Lady Luck Active. Here you can see that your prospects are a little bit more favorable, with your infantry on average taking 5 HP of Neotanks in the best of circumstances. Here I would actually say it's worth it to take the gamble, as the value you can gain is simply too good to pass up. On average, you will take around 11,000 funds of value out with a unit of your own worth 1,000, which means that an infantry is basically earning itself in 11 times over on average, so that is very good. Still, there is some gamble involved and you do risk losing your infantry, so it kind of depends on how much you need them to capture certain properties. If the infantry don't really have anything important to do, then I would definitely go for it, but if there are valuable properties in the area to be captured, I would maybe hold back a little. 
So to summarize, sending Nell infantry into expensive vehicles like medium tanks and neo tanks is a pretty good part of her toolkit, and a good reason why so many players dread going up against her. But it's very important that you know beforehand how the numbers work in your favor, because if you take the wrong gambles, you will risk losing all your infantry, and that can be really bad for your long-term game. However, infantry aside, there is another unit that Nell has that is amazing when it comes to luck damage, and the units I'm talking about are her battlecopters. Battlecopters are unique in that they're cheap and deal pretty decent damage to all ground units, and unless they go up against anti-air, they take practically no damage back. This means that Nell's Battlecopters can afford to take gambles with luck damage, as the repercussions aren't that dire. Here you can see a simulation of Nell's Battlecopters going up against Andy Neotanks with her superpower active. And you can see just how incredibly strong they are, and you can take this gamble every single time with basically no drawback. So Nell's Battlecopters are absolutely insane. The only unit you really need to care about are other Battlecopters, Fighters, and Anti-Air. But even against Anti-Air, you can actually sometimes take the gamble with your superpower. Here's the simulation of Nell's Battlecopter with Lady Luck active, against Andy's anti-air, and on average, if you catch them out in the open, your battlecopters will deal 7 HP of damage to them, which is absolutely incredible. This is something that can absolutely take your opponent off guard, because they might not expect it. After all, it's not every day you see battlecopters take out anti-air. So in short, I think Nell has some of the best battlecopters in the game. I'd argue she's an even stronger copter commander than Eagle or even Sensei. Another unit that definitely deserves an honorable mention are Nell's Artillery. Cheap and easy to mass, they can do a tremendous amount of damage with her powers up. And because they are indirect units, you don't have to rely on lucky rolls to avoid taking counterattacks. Nell works very well on maps which favor artillery, since she can easily blast away medium tanks, neo tanks, or even mega tanks without issue. A heavily fortified Nell army with infantry in front, backed up by artillery and battlecopters, is an incredibly threatening prospect to go up against, because when she pops her powers, every one of those units are capable of dealing tremendous damage. So now that we've seen a little bit of what Nell can do, I think it is time for us to start comparing her to other CEOs in order to decide which tier she belongs in. I think we can easily conclude that she does not belong in tier 0. She just doesn't do anything against CEOs like Colin and Combi. To prove my point, I played two games against the Grandmasters Star Flash 250 and Raider of Karaman, me using Combine and Colin and them using Nell, and they didn't even stand a chance against me. I completely mopped the floor with them. And these are players who are rated roughly 400 MMR points above me, so that should give you an idea of the level of power between the CEOs. However, let's see how Nell fares against the Tier 1 gang, Hawk, Javier, Sasha, and Von Boltz. Let us start with Hawk. As we established at the beginning of this video, Nell's day-to-day -day bonus is comparable to his, so they should be on even footing to start off with. However, I don't see Nell being able to keep up with Hawk's insane global damage on larger maps. Blackstorm is simply too valuable, and it has the added side effect of reducing Nell's luck damage since it is tied to our own unit's HP. Every time Hawk pops Blackstorm, he's essentially reducing most of Nell's luck damage by 20% across the board, unless she has units repairing on cities, and this really adds up over the course of a match. I would say Nell could take games against him on smaller maps, where Blackstorm takes too long to charge up, but on most medium to large size maps, Hawk should easily win this matchup. Then we have Javier. If you've been paying attention to this video so far, you will have noticed how heavily defense counteracts luck damage, especially when stacked with defensive terrain. Javier is all about defense, and I would go as far as to say that he actually hard counters Nell. Not only does he get a passive 10% bonus on maps with comm towers, but when he activates his powers, his defense rises even higher, which takes a big bite out of Nell's potential luck damage. So this matchup goes to Javier. Next up, we have Sasha, and I think out of all the CEOs in Tier 1, she is the one that Nell would have the best chances against. Their day-to-day -day bonuses are comparable, with Nell's units doing roughly 10% more damage, while Sasha gets 10% more income. However, while Sasha has the ability to block Nell's powers with her market crash, Nell's short power meters makes it very hard for her to keep doing this into the late game. Most of the CEOs in Tier 1 have very long power bars, like Von Bolt and Hawk, making it easy for Sasha to repeatedly block their powers, but with Nell, I don't see her doing that as easily, so I'd say this matchup might be pretty even. Then we have Von Bolt, and the things I said about Javier also applies here. 
Nell really struggles going up against Seos with defensive day-to-day -day abilities, and Von Bolt has a passive 10% bonus in this area. When his unit sits on cities, it severely reduces Nell's luck damage. She might be able to fire off some decent Lady Lux on open terrain, but that 10% extra defense takes such a bite out of Nell's potential damage, and it adds up heavily over the course of a match, so I'll give this one to Von Bolt. So among the tier 1 COs, Nell has a decent matchups against one out of the four, that being Sasha, but she really struggles against Hawk on bigger maps, as well as Von Bolt and Javier on most maps, so I don't think it's fair for her to be put in tier 1. Let us go down a tier and try with tier 2 instead. Tier 2 has a lot of COs with strong powers, like Eagle, Max, Olaf, and Sami. Let's start by comparing Nell with Max, as we did earlier on in the video. Nell's day-to-day -day obviously cannot measure up against Max's 20% firepower on his direct vehicles, but her powers does hit a lot harder than his, albeit without the movement bonus. Nell does, on the other hand, apply her power to her entire army, making her infantry and artillery deadly against Max's vehicles, so it really depends on the map. Nell can absolutely take games against Max as long as it's not a map where he can just roll over her with tanks. I would say that Nell has the advantage on smaller maps where her infantry can get up close and personal with Max's vehicles, and I'd say that this is probably a pretty even matchup, all things considered. Up next we have Eagle, and going up against Lightning Strike is terrifying no matter who you are, and I would say that Eagle definitely has the advantage against Nell on bigger maps, where he can get a lot of value out of his super. On very small maps, on the other hand, I can see Nell rolling over him with infantry and tanks before he gets a chance to pop it. So once again, it's a very map-dependent matchup, but one that I tilt slightly in Eagle's favor. Then we have Olaf, and just like with Hawk, global damage is very powerful against Nell since it shaves 20% off her luck damage every time it comes in. On larger maps with lots of rough terrain, Olaf should in theory take games against Nell, but as with the other COs, on smaller maps where Nell can utilize her superior firepower, she might be able to take Olaf down before Winter Fury comes in to equalize the playing field. I'd say this is yet another map-dependent matchup slightly tilted in favor of Olaf. Lastly, we have Sami, and Sami is a bit of a special case because she only tends to get picked on maps where her infantry can excel, and on such maps, Nell will have a hard time against her. One very good point that was brought up by the Grandmasters when we were discussing Nell was whether or not her tanks could interrupt Sami's captures, and it turns out that they cannot. In order to interrupt a Sami cap, you gotta reduce her infantry to 3 HP, and Nell cannot do this on her own. Even with one comm tower, her chances of pulling this off are exceedingly slim, as opposed to Max, who can do it a lot more reliably. Still, I'm not going to rule this heavily in favor of either CO, as both of them are very map-dependent. Unlike Tier 1, Nell has much better prospects against the Tier 2 COs, though most of these matchups are very map-dependent, as we've seen repeatedly. Though I will say that Nell fights on par with most of the COs in this tier. I'm not going to measure her up against the Tier 3 COs, because I honestly don't believe they can match up to her luck damage, maybe with the exception of Kindle on a very property-heavy map. But with all that said, I think it's time for some closing thoughts and a final verdict. Nell is a very hard CO to place. In the Grandmaster Discord channel, we discussed her utility for hours and hours on end, and it was impossible to find a consensus that everyone agreed with. Nell is dangerous because she can completely change the rules of the game for a turn. Infantry, who are usually only good for walling, suddenly turn into nuclear missiles capable of randomly taking out your tanks, albeit with a chance to succeed or fail. However, after listening to everyone's arguments, I personally have to place Nell as a tier 2 CO, as I think this is where she would have the most balanced matchups. I will make the case for her maybe being a little bit stronger in fog, since you can hide your infantry and artillery in forests to come out and ambush your opponents, but I don't think it would move her up to tier 1, especially considering Sturm would be in that tier, and we all know how Nell deals with defense. I will also say that Nell is a lot better in live games, aka matches played in Advanced Wars by Web where players have limited time. This is because Nell is a difficult CO to plan with. You can bust out the move planner, but it's not going to do you any good unless you know what your roles are. In a live match, however, things are chaotic, and you don't have time to use the move planner, so the ability to just come out swinging with random luck damage can really take your opponent by surprise, and also makes it harder for them to predict their turns. So I'd maybe go as far as to say that in 
in live matches, Nell would probably be tier 1. At least if it's a map she's not complete garbage on. So yeah, that is my final consensus on how strong Nell is actually. She's certainly a powerful CO, but nowhere near top tier. She is hilariously fun to use though, and I wish they'd let her see some play in some of the lesser played formats like high funds. I do understand it would piss a lot of people off if she was ever allowed in competitive play, because at the end of the day, you can just come in swinging, roll high, and win matches you aren't supposed to. However, I disagree with this notion that people present that Nell is a CO that doesn't require skill to use, and that she's all about just rolling the dice. Knowing how to utilize Nell's powers requires a lot of practice. When she says that luck is a skill, I think she actually has a very good point, because using Nell's powers correctly requires you to really know your probability, and you need to be able to do very advanced calculations on the fly, and it's extremely rewarding when you manage to pull it off correctly. At the end of the day, I don't think we will ever see Nell make her debut in the Global League, but hey, I can always dream, right? Anyway, I'd really love to hear your opinions on this video, because I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of different arguments for and against Nell. Some of them will probably be good, others will be bad, but I look forward to seeing them all nonetheless. I'd like to know if you agree with me placing her in tier 2, or if you think she deserves to be placed higher or lower. Let me hear all your arguments in the comment section below, and before I close off this video, I would like to give a special thanks to the Grandmasters Deejus, Starflash250, King Arthur, Toulouse, Witty711, and Raider Alcaro Man, who all played matches to provide footage for this video, and also chimed in a lot in the discussion regarding Nell herself. Thank you so much guys, this video would not be possible without you. Anyway, my name is Inmengs, leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.